So I'll show you the final product of this uh, particular tutorial. So we have something like this, uh, in which I can hover over particular keyboards, keyboard button, and I can click. So uh, a particular function will be executed. And let's say if I uh, use the keyboard inputs, so up and down arrow, I can still hover over this uh, over and with the press enter, then with that particular function will be called. Uh, I was playing near Automata the other day and uh, I felt like the UI was really nice and like quite simplistic but uh, looks really beautiful. So I thought of creating something like this. Uh, so like I figured out how what, what all mechanics do we need for this and uh, like I have done a small breakdown of it. So it would look something like this. Like we have a uh, uh, similar screen to uh, the UI of the game that we have uh, near automata. And uh, there were some keyboard inputs. So the keyboard input part, I will try to recreate like up down arrows. Uh, they are used for navigation over the whole UI thing. After that, we have underline. So like when we hover over something or uh, if I uh, navigate over a particular button, it plays a small underlining animation. So we'll try to create that. After that, we have like hover and click sounds. Uh, that's like quite basic for the time, but uh, yeah, we'll try to implement that. Uh, then we have something like a dynamic camera spawn. So about camera spawns, we can say that uh, they are like some particular transforms at a particular location in a scene and uh, we can like uh, at uh, runtime or dynamically we can change that to some kind of input of uh, value in an array or something so we'll try to integrate that after that we have uh, like a very simple background view. so uh, that that is what i identified in the components of this uh, particular breakdown the resources that we would be requiring uh, i could download the audio sources from evento like that's very popular site and it provide some free uh, resources so, and uh, for fonts we use google fonts and specifically i use open sans so uh, this one uh, we can go here and like download family and we can create inside unreal we have a very simple c uh, that's like a low poly pack that i have got so we would be using that as uh, it will provide some kind of background uh, so that it doesn't look that boring <laughs> because it's mostly UI. So uh, yeah, we can start from this part. So uh, now I can uh, break down the whole structure thing that we have created. So I would be using something like this, uh, very simple UI. UI as in like uh, the UI blueprints are there. Structs are like uh, a structure that we have created. So the basic explanation for this would be like if we want to expand on this system, we can add some particular variables or things that uh, uh, can be passed through. After that, we have uh, something known as uh, with a very simple sounds folder. So we have downloaded these two sounds. So we will be using that. Fonts is like the open sense fonts that I already told. So I have downloaded that and I have created like three particular uh, font families for that bold uh, default and entity default is like the regular one so <laughs> go ahead and uh, go into data table so uh, i have created two data tables uh, first one is for the rich text i like to use rich text and with some short abbreviations so that uh, we can have a very uh, good looking and uh, uh, some some good properties with that and I would like to continue. Uh, so we would like to use rich text as uh, it is very uh, kind of dynamic and we can pass through different font styles similar to Unity Text Explorer with the HTML text. So uh, this is like uh, what I like to use. And after that, we have created uh, that particular structure that we uh, have made uh, like here. So this particular structure, I have created a, a data table out of it so that we can parse the values. And uh, like this is not absolutely not necessary, but uh, I like to use it this way. And after that, we have like uh, the blueprint structure. 
which have like uh, these two are the main things as well as like I need to create it for fun uh, so that I can break down the whole thing and uh, BP camera transform would be like the uh, for, for dynamic camera uh, visions we can <coughs> place it somewhere and uh, uh then we pass it in an array and uh, then we can pass the index so that uh, we can spawn the camera at that location so after that we have like game mode so game mode would be having like mostly uh this we can place the uh, most important thing so first of all i'm teleporting to that location basically finding that particular index array uh, of uh, the transform actor and uh, i'm teleporting it there and after that, I'm making you as so making you as basically like I'm spawning the particular actor that I want and adding it to viewport and setting the game mode to your app. And in teleport to location, I'm very simply finding out all the actors of this particular blueprint and uh, getting the actor transform and setting the player control pawn and uh, player controller to that location. So that's that. The whole backbone of this thing is uh, this uh, UI blueprints. So I have two base blueprints. I'll start with the first one. So the first one is like uh, I've used a methodology which I used in Unity. So basically creating a prefab and then instantiating it over a particular thing. So that I just need to change one thing and all the whole system takes it, uh, take that into account. So what I've done here is like I have created a size box so that I can control the size of the particular button. A canvas so that I can place the own stuff, a base button so all the uh, all the button structure and button mechanism is inside this. A text field which is like the uh, your rich text so that I can uh, use the data table that I created for this text and pass the elements or should I say tags inside this and pass that uh, particular field so that it automatically takes that into account so yep and then we have these three images so basically i have uh, created a very simple animation for underlining the whole thing so that uh, when we hover over it the uh, underline animation takes place and i've created two animation very simple key points so that uh, like you can see in the preview window uh, we have like a very simple animation that plays for sprite top and sprite down would be simply and inside the graph we have some uh, logic inside this so on sprite hover enter is like uh, we are uh, hovering over it so i'm enabling the sprite and playing that animation that we created uh, similar to that we have the opposite of it uh, where i'm disabling the sprite and playing that animation uh, and i'm calling these two functions uh like on focus path this is basically uh, called when the uh keyboard focus is there so when we uh come on to that an event from keyboard uh, this particular function is called and uh, on hovered is basically when your mouse is hovering over that particular state. so uh that particular thing is calling this uh, on mouse hover enter on sprite hover enter and uh playing that thumb that we have downloaded from the window and uh, like the opposite of that is when we remove the particular keyboard uh, like and uh, similar to that function uh, like the exact opposite of it is like when the mouse is uh, like we remove the hover from that mouse so unhovered is called and uh, we play that particular function and uh, for the keyboard binders uh, if we uh, remove the focus from that particular element this function is called so we are doing that uh, Offering over part so because we are having a separate blueprint for uh, uh, all the functionalities that I have uh, uh, called the event dispatcher on this so that uh, when we click on this element a particular event is called uh, like a uh, event is a uh, delegate is called and the uh, server is subscribed to the delegate uh, they get a notification so like this part I'll show you in the uh, main blueprint uh, image status is like uh, very sim simply explained is uh, I'm enabling and disabling the particular thing uh, like through visibility so that if we, we want to disable the particular parts we can do this way. after that we have set text so basically if I want to set this particular text 
uh, from some other place i can call this function so basically that explains all the functions and here we go with the main thing that i, I was inspired from near automata to, uh, so i uh, basically named it something <laughs> similar but uh, a bit different so here we have a very simple hierarchy uh, background width of sorts uh, of very small strength of two so that it just uh, plus it a bit but not that much and then we have a vertical box for the whole button stuff and like let's say some some other text because i saw in here automata that they have some other text so i paste it there and topic is like the name, uh, name of the game so like very simple structure here on um, event construct i am creating the buttons so creating the buttons as in i'm spawning those buttons so, basically i'm getting it from the data table this is absolutely not necessary i i uh, try to make it this way so that I, uh, in future we want to extend it to something else we can easily do that and uh, then we have a for loop so uh basically for each loop and uh, i'm i'm iterating over all the particular elements that we have and creating that as a text and uh, because we have this as a rich text so we can pass it with these arguments and setting the text and i'm adding it as a child to the uh, vertical box so that it is getting displayed over this particular area and uh, so yeah, basically that's that and uh, after that i'm binding the click events so that if we press something we can call it through this particular area uh, basically i'm uh, giving every button an index so that we can identify which button was pressed and what function to execute so uh, basically on binding it i'm binding it to this particular on click which uh, takes an index and like execute some functions all of these can be uh, changed through some functionality or events that we want to call uh, when we press that button so yeah, that's very easy for us and uh, because we have created the buttons then we can set the focus of keyboard uh, through this uh, particular function yeah. uh, we can change the index through this and uh, yeah that's the whole functionality thanks a lot for watching this video